Hey there, Beertubers. Welcome back to another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. I'm Average Joe. And apparently today I'm going to continue my journey of reviewing so-called shelf turd beers. Speaking of shelf turds, I want to give a shout out to somebody who I forgot in my introductory vlog, and that is none other than the coffee-loving, good old Canadian pal of mine, Aaron Doucette. Shout out to you, Aaron. The reason why I'm going to shout out Aaron in this review and not in another vlog is because of my Anchor Porter review, he left a great comment. And in that comment, he mentioned the hashtag shelf turd power hour, which was quite funny and also quite accurate. Uh, although with Anchor Porter, you would think it's a shelf turd here in the Western New York area. I can't even find it. I actually needed to have the beer sent to me by my buddy Todd. Thanks again, Todd. Uh, but yeah, anyway, shout out to you, Aaron. Uh, I appreciate the comment and your support. Aaron used to follow beer tubers quite a bit, but kind of tailed off here in the last couple years. So that's why I forgot to shout him out, but hashtag that's on me. Sorry, Aaron, but also shout out. Anyway, without any further ado, let's get into today's review. The beer I'll be reviewing today comes from the Ithaca Beer Company out of Ithaca, New York, and this is their Flower Power. So Flower Power is an American style IPA, and according to their website, again, this is their website, comes in at 7.2% alcohol by volume. They do not list the IBUs, which isn't a big deal, I don't really care. Uh, the malts are using two row pal and honey malt. Uh, the, uh, I'm pretty sure the hops they're using, Simcoe, Cascade, Atnum, and Centennial, and they're dry hopping this with Chinook, Simcoe, and Amarillo. And I usually won't do this, but I found it quite comical. On the website, they have cheese pairings, and it says this beer will pair with some of your more punching cheeses, baby, like maybe a Danish blue cheese or a gargonzola. I just like saying gargonzola like that, but uh, I found that uh, pretty funny. Obviously, IPAs, they usually pair pretty well with uh, stronger cheeses, so yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, so this beer, the reason I'm reviewing this, this is the second review I'm ever posting, is kind of like the first beer they ever mentioned, Anchor Porter. Uh, this has a history with me. This is the first IPA that I ever tolerated. Didn't like it, didn't hate it, tolerated it. Uh, this was back in 2012. I started uh, drinking craft beer in 2009, so it was about three years until I could tolerate an IPA, and this was the one. Up until then, too many of them had like a resinous pine character and too much grapefruit, not enough other citrus, and certainly not many tropical fruit characters that my hashtag baby palette uh, was detecting. Too many hashtags in this review already. Um, so yeah, I, it's just one of those beers that kind of, you know, I hearken back to when I get into IPAs and whatnot. And I figured I'd give it a review. I haven't drank it in a couple years. This is the first time that I'm actually consuming it in a 16-ounce pounder can. They're usually in bottles. Now they sell them in four packs. So, yeah, I picked this up at a local place that actually broke up the four packs up until uh, a week ago when I picked this up. I didn't see them in singles anywhere, and I didn't want to buy a four-pack just because so many good beers to drink. Anyway, I'm rambling now. The last thing I will say, though, is Food and Wine Magazine uh, made a list back in early 2017, and the list was the most, or their, their top 25 most impar uh, important, I can't even speak today. I really can't speak most days. 25 most important American beers, and this was actually the 25th on the list. Good company. Number one was Sierra uh, Nevada Palo, of course. Anchor Steam was on the list, uh, Anchor Porter, uh, a couple others, and the panel uh, was actually quite knowledgeable. Sam Calagione from Dogfish Head, uh, Jim Cook from uh, Boston Beer Company, a.k.a. Samuel Adams, and a bunch of other great craft uh, head brewers and owners. So I thought it was a pretty good list, but I really don't care about lists, and probably neither do you. I'm going to crack this open, give it a pour, because I've rambled enough. Um, I don't know what to expect from this beer anymore. I really don't. Uh, I used to love this beer a lot. Um, I used to think it was one of my favorite beers and I don't know what happened in the uh, past couple years. Uh, the, like I said, the last time I had this was 2000, late 2015, so like two and a half years. But the last couple times I had it, there was certainly some kind of batch variation. Uh, there's, I don't want to say rumors, but there was talk uh, uh, for the last two or three years that this has underwent recipe changes. And I feel like it has. I, the last two or three times I had it, it certainly was different each time. So we'll see if that's the case today. So... Pours out like your old school. Actually, this is a bit hazier than I remember. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera as well. I'll, I'll you know, a little bit closer there, but it definitely has a nice haze component to it. Not like a New England style IPA, but at the same time, it has a nice hazy, like orangey, slight amber color. 
It looks like the glowing sun in the light. Not really. But it looks actually a lot better than I uh, anticipated it uh, coming out of the can. Because I'm like, this is going to be like almost a crystal clear, old school, West Coast style IPA like it was intended to be. But it's not. The uh, the head actually has this off-white, almost slight tannish color. It's just, it's really weird. I didn't anticipate that as well. The appearance, the appearance really doesn't matter too much when it comes to beer. Everyone likes hazy beers and whatnot. But uh, in this situation, I'm actually kind of... Kind of shocked that it looks like this, but whatever. Let's get in the nose. Yeah, that's actually very reminiscent to the last time I had it. One thing I noticed about this beer, definitely a little bit more malt forward. That honey malt, it could be just, uh, you know, playing tricks with my mind, but I do get this, like, slight honey uh, honey undertone uh, with the malt. A little bit of caramel, a little bit of, like, fresh baked bread type of malt character. And then there's just, uh, the hops in this, this is this is what kind of sold me originally when I first had this. There is grapefruit. There's a ton of like a sweeter orange, but then there's a nice tropical uh, component to this one. A bit of a pineapple, maybe a mango or like a peachy thing going on, but mostly, mostly pineapple. And that's what sold it uh, on me originally. It just had a different feel, different vibe to it than everything that I was drinking back then. There's a, a touch of floral... Uh, yeah, touch of like a, I want to say floral character, but again, flower power, you know, it, 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 it might not be there. But for me, there is There's a little bit of a floral, almost slight earthiness to it, uh, like this slight spicy tea character. It's, it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, at the same time, it's one of those characteristics that I do remember getting in this beer. So um, I don't know what that means other than I do want to get into this. And I do want to give it a go, so we're going to. Cheers, everybody. Let's see what it has to offer. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Um, this is the beer I remember. And, you know, my palate has come a long way. Trust me, it's still a stupid palate. But it's come a long way. Uh, in the nine years I've been drinking craft beer, and certainly in the last six that I've enjoyed IPAs or started to enjoy IPAs. But this still just uh, tugs on the heartstrings. It just pulls on them. It, it's, man, reminiscing when you drink a beer like this, kind of like I do with the Anchor Porter. It just reminds you of how fun craft beer can be. And how sometimes uh, not drinking the most wallish beer or hyped beer or crazy beer out there you don't need to be drinking all those beers to enjoy it. Sometimes you just can crack a beer. Uh, you don't really have to contemplate it too much. And that's what kind of this beer is for me nowadays. Yes, I understand uh, that it, I'm, I'm being somewhat contradictive there when I'm saying that since I'm reviewing this beer. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I will never review this beer again. And it's going to be one that I pick up occasionally and just throw in the fridge for like hangouts and live shows and stuff. But anyway, uh, so as far as on the palate... Right up front, you're hit with that that malt sweetness. There's the the, the, the slight honey tones, a um, little bit of that fresh baked uh, bread, and uh, as it transitions through the palate, that spicy tea component actually hits me like mid palate, which is cool because it goes from the sweetness to like the slight spicy tea character, and then it finishes with most of the hop character, sweeter orange, uh, definitely big on the grapefruit, and and a nice pine uh, pineapple characteristic. It's not overly complex. It's not going to blow anybody's socks off. Certainly not nowadays with the New England style and just the different uh, ways to brew beers, the different hops available, the different just techniques. You know, this is this is a. Uh, I believe this recipe was first developed in 2004. So you're talking a 14 year old recipe, right? So it can't really compare with the big boys nowadays. And when I say big boys, I mean like the Sam Adams and Stones and everything. Sierra Nevada. I'm talking about like the trillions of tree houses and of the world like the, the 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 hyped up new england style producers that are killing it it's not fair to compare the two um but yeah medium bodied 7.2 percent and you don't really feel the 7.2 percent uh but it definitely has a nice uh medium body to it it's crisp it's relatively clean after you know you drink it there's not a lot of lingering characteristics, a lot of lingering flavors on your tongue. You kind of want to go back uh, for another sip because it does have a semi-dry to almost full dry finish. It's kind of drying out my palate right now. Most of the saliva is just gone in my mouth. 
in general, this is just a for 7.2% crushable beer at this point. Uh, but like I said, there's not a much there's not much going on in here. I, I think the best, the biggest selling point, I just grabbed air, right? It's a little fuzzy, I tried to grab it. Um, I think the best thing about this beer and the biggest selling point for me is that it's readily available. It is a shelf turd. Uh, it's not ex that expensive. I think this can was like 250 or something, 275. And I can get it relati relatively fresh around here. It does have a uh, Candon date on the bottom, but I can't read it. It's like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just scrunched up. But I know this is pretty fresh, probably under a month old. I don't know. I just enjoy it. I think it's a it's a damn good beer. Uh, like I said, it, it, it's one of those classic beers for me. So it's not like mind blowing, but at the same time, I thoroughly do enjoy it. So uh, the rating on the Flower Power uh, IPA from Ithaca, I'm going to give this, you know what? I used to give this like a 425, depending on, how, you know, the batch or whatever. I'm just going to go straight four out of five on this. Uh, it's nothing that's going to blow your mind, but if you see this and you're in the northeastern uh, northeastern part of the uh, United States and you've never had it before, give it a go. Like I said, it's not going to blow your mind. At the same time, it's kind of like the Anchor Porter for me where it's a classic beer for me. It's part of my beer history, and I would totally always recommend someone trying this out. So that does it for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, if you want to like, comment, subscribe, do it all, actually, if you do anything any of those three, put a comment in the comment section and uh, I will get back to you. I respond, I've responded to all of uh, the comments so far on my channel and I appreciate everyone commenting and liking and subscribing and everything. Uh, so far it's been a great time and hopefully after this review now, I've reviewed my two classic beers and the ones that I've always wanted to review. So now we're going to move on to maybe beers people actually care about. And uh, once we get into those, I, I'd imagine there'll be a bit more conversation and interest, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, appreciate you guys stopping by. Until the next one, cheers.